welcome back to the Your Bear Knits podcast. My name is Jordan. This is my fourth episode of my knitting podcast, and it's been, I think, three weeks since my last one. Um, Erwin decided to get up right as I started filming. Um, but it's been three weeks because I moved. Um, actually, it might have been it might be four weeks by the time I upload this. Um, but that's okay. Um, I moved about a week and a half ago at this point, and so, as you probably know, if you've ever <laughs> moved at all, it takes a long time just to get everything packed, move everything, get it unpacked. So this, as you may notice, if you've been here for the last few episodes, this is a new setup. Um, I'm trying out different rooms in my new place. This is like our office, as you might be able to tell by all the books. So I've got, we've got all the books behind us. And then sort of like on the other side of me is the desk. However, we don't have our office chair yet. Um, so I'm sitting in sort of like our low lounger fun desk. It's like desk chair. You know what I mean? Um, it's that Ikea chair that I think is like trendy right now, but for good reason. It's very comfy and it's very cute. So anyway, that was just a little personal update for me for why I haven't posted in a while. I I have been doing some knitting, um, not quite as much as I had been doing in February and March, just since the last weekend of March up through like the first few days of April or so when we were moving was just really busy. I was so tired. My hands were just so dry and things from, you know, handling dusty bits and bobs and holding, whether it's the cardboard boxes or like the sort of like plasticky Ikea bag type bags, you know, um, it was a lot, but I'm excited to be filming again. I do have a few updates and yeah, we'll jump right into it. Um, I have my laptop on my lap for some reason. I'm just going to set that down. Okay. So we'll start with my finished object. I have one. It's over here. Um, I had done most of it in my last episode, so I think I finished it a few days after I filmed <laughs> the other podcast, and it is Vest Number 4 by My Favorite Things Knitwear. Um, kind of hard to see right now because it, it was open. Um, I'm just going to button a few of the buttons real quick so that you can get an idea of what it looks like in case you are unfamiliar with the pattern or didn't watch the last episode. Um, but yeah, so here it is. And <laughs> please excuse the, uh, the dog slobber down here. Um, <laughs> I'm going to have to, <laughs> to get that out. I, it'll probably come out easily with just like a washcloth, but, um, but yeah, I have obviously worn this then. Um, I've actually worn it a lot since I finished it. It's been a really versatile piece, which is what I was hoping for. Um, I knit this in Jody Long Alpamayo, which is 50% cotton and 50% alpaca. So it's really soft. Um, like it's not like a fuzzy mohair type soft or anything, but it's it's just really smooth and it feels really nice uh, on your skin. And as you can see, I just knit it in the color black. Um, I always forget, I think they use a number and I don't remember the number, but I can put it either on the screen or in the description box. Um, in case you are curious about the specific color, but it's just the black. Um, after I had knit my step-by-step -step cardigan by Handmade by Florence, I really wanted 
sort of like a more spring or summer appropriate cardigan slash vest sort of thing in black. Um, so even though black is not like a, a spring color necessarily, this is, I feel like a very spring piece, um, especially for this spring season in Austin. We've had kind of like a, a wide range of temperature where like some days it's been getting very hot up into like the mid 80s, even the low 90s Fahrenheit, of course. And then like yesterday, it was really, it was really cold again because we'd had a little storm move through. And so this has been really nice for layering. I've worn it both over shirts, like t-shirts. And actually last week to work, I wore it over one of my button up shirts, which looked really cute. And I've also worn this just as sort of like a tank top. So like buttoned all the way up. Um, I almost wore it today actually um, for filming this. And then it was still a little chilly this morning when I was getting dressed. And so I decided to just go for this sweater, which um, is just from Everlane, even though it really reminds me of the Elizabeth blouse by Petite Knit. And so sometimes when I see that pattern, I think I want it, but then I remember I, <laughs> I have this already. Anyway, um, not to go on another tangent, but yeah, this, this is all to say that this has been a really great uh, layering piece and exactly what I was hoping for. Um, I will say last week when I was at work, I happened to just like be walking around a lot outside and even though my my shirt underneath was relatively thin because it was just sort of like a cotton yeah a cotton button-up collared shirt having this over I, I did get a little warm so I think having that alpaca in it does make it slightly warmer than like if it was just cotton obviously so We'll see how long I can continue to wear this as the weather does heat up a lot in Texas in the summer. So like this might not be like a July or August wear, but for the time being, it's it's been perfect. I have really been enjoying wearing it buttoned all the way up to the top with my little necklaces like this one and wearing another one or I have a really colorful necklace that says Jordan on the front as well that I made when I was a kid and I, I've been wearing it a lot again recently and that's really fun for a little pop of color over the black. Um, yeah, so this, this was really successful. I am super, super happy with how it turned out. I knit the body on 4.5 millimeter needles so it went relatively quickly, especially considering <laughs> there's no sleeves. And I also made it relatively cropped. Um, I think I spoke about that last time in the other episode where I talked about this, that in the pattern, and I, I've totally forgot to look up how many centimeters uh, My Favorite Things Knitwear wrote for you to knit the body, but it seemed very long. And even though I have a long torso, I do wear pretty much exclusively high-waisted pants or shorts. And so I do tend to just crop things anyway and so I cropped this one and it sits sort of <clears throat> oh my gosh sorry it sits sort of perfectly right where most of my high-waisted bottoms land around my waist so I never envisioned tucking this in this is always like a, a keep out sort of garment um, so it hits at the perfect point for me, which is awesome. And let's see, I did the ribbing around the armholes at the bottom, and then the button band is also one by one rib. So all of that was done in a 3.5 millimeter needle, and I think it looks pretty good. Um, the buttons I used were just from that sort of pack of buttons that I ordered on Amazon when I was doing my cardigan. Um, and these are, I believe it was the 15 millimeter size. And again, I just chose the black. I held up the sort of more gray toned button on the, on the vest. And I think I even looked at 
the lighter color as well and again I just like didn't really like the look of it so my step-by-step -step cardigan in black has the black buttons and now my vest number four in black also has black buttons but I think it looks really great um I am okay with how the ribbing looks with the button band here. I will say after having done the double knitting for the step-by-step -step cardigan, I do kind of like how that looks more than the one-by-one -one rib, but I, again, I'm not mad about it. I still think that it looks really great all together. I mean, it, it certainly matches the rest of the ribbing around the, the garment, so it makes sense. Um, but yeah, I don't know how much more else there is to say about this. Um, yeah, I'll put some pictures if I haven't already, but I'll put some pictures of myself wearing it. Um, yeah, it's, it's cute. It's, it's been a good, a good spring piece. So that is my only finished object for now. Um, <laughs> my two... My two whips, which I'll talk about next, have both been sort of like a start and stop and then restart <laughs> situation. So I'll start, I'll start with the one that I, Erwin decided he was itchy. So we just took a quick pause while he was scratching so that his collar tags weren't jingling in the background. But on to the first whip. <laughs> I, so before I show you the whole thing, I wanted to find a, a project to use my typical Bliss um, worsted weight hand dyed yarn for. And if you've seen my other podcast episodes, you'll know that I was interested in knitting the Lonely Leftovers vest by Wool and Beyond. And I thought hand dyed yarn is perfect for that because there's a lot of color change anyway in the, um, in the sample or like the original knit that the designer made. And I was super interested in this color because it's a really beautiful the lighting's kind of strange, but um, there you can kind of see it now. Really beautiful, like pale green base with these other like pops of bright blue, um, some pinky oranges. There's little bits of yellow sometimes as well. And I thought that vest would be really great for it. However, <laughs> when I was actually looking at the pattern, I realized that this was going to be... Um, too thin and I didn't have enough of it to hold it double for the vest and so I figured instead of trying to finagle that and have it not work out that I would just find another pattern to use for the yarn and then at some point I do still want to make that vest because I do think it's really cool but I yeah I'll, I'll use thicker yarn chunkier yarn and so then then I was doing a lot of research on Ravelry <laughs> to try to figure out what to do for this. And I, even though this is wool and I'm, I'm really thinking about spring and summer knitting, I was like, you know what? I, I, I want a sweater. I'm going to start the sweater. And even if I don't finish it right now, that's okay. It'll be ready to go once it hits fall or whenever you know in a few months <laughs> or I could always bring it to my office to wear something like that and so I I'm not really sure why I picked this one <laughs> but um hold on sorry I, <laughs> I totally forgot the pattern <laughs> that I had originally started, so I had to go check. Um, so I had planned and started 
knitting sweater number nine light by my favorite things knitwear with this yarn and I'll, I'll put a picture up to show how far I got with it um I had planned to just do sort of like a mock neck or more of like a crew neck if possible because that pattern has you knit like a full turtleneck and I didn't I didn't want that because I knew I wanted this to be sort of like um sort of like a, a more spring-ish appropriate sweater and so I did shorter neck and then I went into the raglan so it's a raglan pattern you do the turtleneck in a two by two rib and then two of the little, the, the ribbing sort of splits out and it follows the raglan line down the shoulders like that on either side. And it looks really nice. Um, I love the other photos that people have done uh, that are on Ravelry and even the original one that I'm assuming that my favorite things knitwear that she did as like the sample one that's in black. It looks really, really nice as well. And so I was knitting it and I just, I wasn't really happy with the tension on the two by two rib, uh, especially in the raglan section. And I don't think I even took a picture of it or anything like I really did not work on it for that long but yeah it just I I wasn't feeling it um I think I <laughs> sorry I, I had lost my train of thought um but I also I wasn't doing I don't think I was doing helical knitting no, I was not because I remember I I started it and I did I worked through the majority of the first ball or like the first cake of the yarn and then decided, oh, this is hand dyed yarn. I should probably sort of alternate it a little bit at least before going to the whole new ball just in case there's color variation, you know. So I did that. And then I also just felt like I was going to be playing yarn chicken with it. <laughs> and I couldn't decide if I wanted it oversized and really cropped or if I wanted it slightly closer fitting and longer. And then I was like, what if I knit the whole thing? And then I run out of, run out of yarn for the last sleeve. And there were just a lot of things that I was like, oh, it's just, it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel right. And so scrolling on Instagram, I saw a pattern by Spectacle Streak and was sort of just like blown away by it. I thought it was really interesting and different and fun. And it used, like specifically used hand dyed yarn to, I think she had partnered with like a, a dyer for this pattern. So it looks really cool in the yarn that, that she used it in. But I figured it would look, it would look cool with any um, hand dyed yarn anyway. And so I decided to cast that on instead because I felt like I could get away with how much yarn I have. I might still be like cutting it a little close, but I think it'll be better. And so... The pattern is the Mega Solar Blouse. I'm going to hold it up, hold mine up to you now. It looks crazy. <laughs> it looks crazy, but I will also put pictures in of the finished garment so that you can see what the finished product looks like. Uh, so <laughs> here it is. Um, so <laughs> make sure I've got the right. Oh, I'm showing it to you backwards. Here it is. So this is a top-down sweater um I don't know I'm not really sure what what the t 
type of shoulder pat shoulder yeah I guess would be like it's not drop shoulder it's not a raglan um it's knit in four by four rib so it's super stretchy so that's why it looks all crazy like this it'll stretch out to be more like that but so you start by knitting the back panel flat and then you can see here where you increase for the underarm shaping and then once you do that you knit the front panel there's a few fewer stitches I think in the front if I did the math right and so there's no there's no no short row shaping which I'm slightly worried about but I think it'll be I think it'll be okay I think I'm hoping that because there's a few less in the front here that that maybe will help. I don't know. Um, but then, yeah, you, again, it looks kind of wonky here in the front. But again, you do the shaping for the armhole, and then you connect the two, the two panels. And, oh, I, I should also say, sorry, you pick up the stitches on either side of the shoulder for the little seam here. So, uh, not to spoil my next whip, but I'm also doing blouse number one by My Favorite Things Knitwear, and that has a similar shape, but different construction. So I'll, I'll talk about that later, but I just wanted to make that distinction with this one that this is picked up the front panel is picked up and knit down like that um so so yeah that so I, i've got as you can see a few inches under the arm so far and in the pattern it's it's cool because since you're sort of meant to be using a hand dyed yarn uh, she does give the option for you depending on what sort of end style you want for the die, you can either continue to knit both pieces flat or you can work in the round. Now, I, I, I think that part of what makes this garment really interesting is sort of like the crazier <laughs> color combos that you can get from the hand dyed yarn by knitting in the round. And so I, I just did that. Um, there honestly is not like a huge difference in this case, because since you're doing ribbing, you're doing an equal amount of knitting and purling. So that part didn't really matter. And then the only other thing too, that, that sold me on doing the, <laughs> the, in the round was that I prefer to not seam if I don't have to. And so I was like, yes, I'm just going to knit in the round. So I think it's going really well. Um, I also did not bother alternating skeins or anything until I ran out right at the end. Um, and so that's why I've got like a little bit of a weird thing with my tension right there. Um, I'll turn it inside out to show you. So like basically what I did was when I had maybe like double the amount of this left of the original ball of yarn, I then I attached this one and sort of just pretended like I was doing um, color work and just did like two stitches of the old yarn and then carried forward the two stitches of the new and then did two of the old, two of the new, whatever. And it wasn't really even for that long. Like I think it was only, yeah, it's just about, 12 stitches I think that I did that for and then and then yeah I just left probably four to five inches of the old yarn so that I have enough to weave in and then yeah and then I continued with the new ball and honestly there's not that much of a difference in sort of like the color pooling or anything like that um, and then again like I said even if there was, I wouldn't really mind because 
that was one of the features of the original garment that drew me to it. It was sort of like the crazy color pattern that you could get. And so I've been really happy with with how this is coming so far. Um, Someone called me and my phone stopped recording. (sighs) Stupid spam callers. But anyway, I've been really happy with how this is coming along. I'm using four millimeter needles and I think I'm on gauge. I'm, I honestly, can't, honestly can't remember what the gauge is supposed to be. I think, I think though that I am on gauge. And also, as you can see, it's super stretchy and it's only gonna get more stretchy once I, once I block it, since this is a super wash yarn. So I'm not super worried about the fit. Um, I'm doing the second size. I'll double check that, but I'm pretty sure I'm doing the second size. And I'm planning... This yarn feels like it's going a lot further in this project than it was in blouse number nine. Or not blouse, sweater number nine. And so I'm planning on knitting... To the end of this ball like continuing to knit on the body until I run out of this and then I'm probably going to do the sleeves next with the third ball and maybe fourth because obviously I want to make sure <laughs> I have sleeves for this and then depending on how much yarn is left over after that I'll see if I need to add any more length to the body I don't entirely know when I'll finish this. Um, Cause like I mentioned briefly, I am working on blouse number one as well. And that for now is my only sort of like spring slash summer knit plan, but there might be something else that pops up in the meantime. Cause I have been feeling sort of, sort of spontaneous recently. So we'll see. I'm not dying to have this done anytime soon, um, just since I don't know if I would be able to wear it. But I'm just sort of knitting it when I feel like it. Um, I've brought it to work a few times to knit during lunch because it's it's pretty portable still, especially since it's pretty compact (laughs) because of the ribbing. And there's only the one ball that I have to worry about taking with me. So that's been going pretty good. Um, I think that's... I think that's it for now though. Um, I'm really excited to see other versions of this top when people make them. I think the pattern just came out like a few weeks ago or something and so it's still pretty new. Like there's not a lot of posts on Instagram for it. I There might be like one or two projects on Ravelry for it. So like not a lot of people have done it yet. I'm really looking forward to seeing how other people's turn out because I think this will be like an amazing project to show off different hand dyed yarns and stuff. So that'll be really fun. Excited to continue sharing the progress of it with you guys. Okay, so my, the yarn's all rolling away. My second uh, work in progress, which I alluded to is blouse number one, light not light. I don't know why I said that. Blouse number one by my favorite things knitwear. And this, this one has kind of a a similar story to the first or to my mega solar blouse in that I was a hundred percent planning to do a, a completely different project with this yarn. Um, so I'll, I'll show the yarn since I'm talking about it now. Um, I've got three balls so they're kind of it's kind of hard to uh, to carry them all so here's the yarn that I'm using um this is quince and co sparrow in the color truffle this is 100% linen and it's like a fingering weight yarn I bought this probably almost a year ago, um, either like late April or May. And 
I was planning to knit a, what is it called? Top sole. I believe I'll put a picture of the pattern, um, but it's by Mochi Knits and it's really cute. I, I would, I would like to still make it. Maybe, <laughs> maybe that'll be one of my other summer projects. Erwin was scratching again. Sorry. We had to pause for the collar. Um, yeah, so I, I knit the majority of that vest, that little top last summer. And I talked about it in my everything I knitted in 2023 video, but if you didn't see that totally okay, I'll talk about it again. I, so I used three millimeter needles, like the pattern called for, for this, for that top. And I like the yarn. It was my first time knitting with 100% linen. I just held it one one strand and it was okay. Like, you know, a lot of people agree knitting with linen is not the most pleasant experience, um, especially compared, compared to wool. Um, but the, the fabric it produced was really nice. However, from the start, I was not happy with the color. Um, I ordered this yarn thinking this was like a taupe with maybe purplish undertones. I thought it was very neutral. It looked like that online. And when I got it in person, I, I mean, it, it looks a little more gray on camera than in person. Like in person, all I can see is purple. And now I love purple. Purple is one of my favorite colors, if not my favorite. But I didn't want <laughs> purple yarn for that top. I wanted a neutral, taupey color. And so when I opened the package and saw this, I was like, okay, uh, I'm just going to go with it. Because like I said, I like purple. I'll just do it, whatever. And when I was knitting it, I just... I just didn't like it. Like the color was not what I wanted. I knew I probably wouldn't wear it that much in this color. And so I decided I'm going to put it aside. I'm going to figure out something else to do with it. It'll be fine. Also that summer, I yeah, I don't remember when exactly, but Petite Knit came out with the Alice top, I think. Yeah, Alice top. And I saw that and thought, oh, okay, that's cute. That's like a nice basic top. It also is knitted in linen. And I think she also holds it maybe like with a cotton. And the, oh, I should have looked this up already. Okay, sorry, I had to look up the, the Sparrow. The Sparrow is, it comes in 50 gram hanks for 168 yards. And so I thought that was similar enough to one of the strands that Petite Knit used for the Alice top. I, I think she uses two Isair yarns, like Trio, mm, that might not be right. I don't know. But regardless, she uses a linen one and a cotton. Oh, I know one of them is like the Japan Bull Mold or something like that. Um, but so I was like, okay, perfect. I'll use one strand of this. And then I'll, I'll get other yarn to hold with it. And so I ordered this. This is Curio by Knit Picks. Um, it is, I don't, it's almost, uh, I, I want to say it's like a lace weight. Like I think Ravelry classifies it. Oh, Ravelry classifies it as thread which I don't even know what that means. <laughs> um, but it, it's 100 grams for 710 yards. Oh, 721 yards, actually. So it's, it's quite thin. And so I, I ordered one ball of it, amongst other things. Nitpicks somehow lost my package, and then it was like re-delivered to me three weeks late. And so I ended up with a ton of extra yarn and I ended up with an extra ball of it. 
And I decided this summer, I'm like spring, going into summer, I'm going to knit the Alice top. I frogged the top sole and then I got one of these and I was holding two strands of the sparrow, one strand of this, and I did not get gauge. Um, The Alice top is knit on either 4.5 or 5 millimeter needles. I am a pretty, I'm a relatively tight knitter, so I usually need to go up half a needle or a full needle size anyway. And so I did my gauge swatch on, I think a five millimeter. And I liked how the fabric turned out. Like I thought it was a, a good thickness without being too loose or too holy because I, I, I'd been hoping that I could wear this top to work. Um, it, it doesn't have like a super low V the straps are relatively thick. So I thought it would be like a summer appropriate work top. Um, cause my workplace is fairly casual. And so I didn't want to go up a needle size and have the fabric be too holy or thin, like where you'd be able to see a bra underneath. And The gauge for the Alice top is 15 stitches in four inches. And now I didn't block it, but my gauge was already at 20 stitches. And I just, I I knew like it was not going to grow that much. Like it was not going to grow five stitches. It maybe would have been like two or something. And so I was like, there's no point in even, in even washing it and seeing. And so then I went back to Ravelry, back to Instagram, looking through different options. The thing that I was running into was finding something that would sort of be work appropriate, but then also finding something that didn't take up more yarn than I had. Because since I had originally bought this yarn for more or less like a tank top, I don't have that much of this. Also, potentially a problem that I don't know where the fourth skein of this is. I thought that it was in one of my knitting bags. So like I've got a little basket down there. I have, where am I pointing? One crate up there, two crates up there, two more behind me. And I thought that, I thought those were the only places where I had yarn So unless I've somehow left (laughs) more yarn at my old apartment, I don't know where it is. I I do have some things at my old apartment still because I'm taking the rest of everything out this weekend, but that's, that's a separate point. So I guess I'll just check when I go back and look for the last few things. But so... I don't have a lot of this necessarily. And so then I, cause then I was thinking, oh, maybe I'll do a t-shirt. Maybe I'll do, I, I mean, I probably wasn't going to do like a cardigan or sweater, but I was looking at different, more like t-shirt options, but I didn't necessarily have enough of this for a t-shirt. Like I love T, I think it's T number one. I'm hoping it's that one by my favorite things knitwear that has like the longer sleeves and the uh, the folded stockinette, I think it's folded stockinette neckline. I think that looks really cool like with the saddle shoulders, but I definitely did not have enough of this and I don't wanna have to buy more of this either. And so then I was thinking, thinking, thinking and blouse number one has been just sitting and simmering in my head ever since it came out. I really wanted to make it. I just never had the yarn for it. And then I was putting away my clothes in my new closet <laughs> and I saw this little this little baby tee that I have from Lisa Says Ga and it's so cute with a little boat neck and I love how it fits. It has sort of like, they're almost, they're basically like cap sleeves and it's cropped, so I can't wear it to work, but I really like the boat neck and the sleeves, and seeing that, I was like, why don't I, why don't I adapt 
blouse number one into just like a short sleeve version. Um, I can do the long sleeve one at a later point in time if I want. Because I've been thinking about this pattern for so long. Like I might as well just buy it, try it out. If the short sleeve doesn't work out, I'll eventually do the long sleeve. So lo and behold, I'm doing blouse number one. Let me see uh, if I can find the front. Oh, okay, this is the front. Don't want it to slip off my needles. This is what I have so far of it, and I am loving it. So I'm holding, as you can probably guess, I'm holding two of these together. Since I have two of them, I'm like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use it. Like, it makes sense since I have more of this than this. So I'm holding these all together and th it's funny because like sometimes I look at this and I'm like, this looks purple too. And then sometimes I look at it and I'm like, oh no, 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 it's gray. So you guys can decide what you think it is, <laughs> what you think it is. Um, but I love the colors together. I think the, the, the uh, curio and let me see if it says what the color. I don't think it even says what color this is. It's lot number three, but I don't I don't even know the color. Just kidding, I looked it up on Ravelry. <laughs> it is hawk. There are like five numbers in front of it, but this color is hawk, in case you're curious. And so I yeah, I, I feel like it tones down sort of like the purpliness of the sparrow. And yeah, I, I think it looks really cool. Um, I'm knitting the second size. I'm hoping that that one is going to be okay for me. Um, I'm kind of like in between the second and third sizes. And I'm hoping that since the curio is cotton, that that'll help it grow a little bit. I don't know how much the linen will, but um, I mean, we'll, we'll see. I, it's supposed to be sort of close fitting anyway, so I'm not, again, I'm not super worried about it, but yeah, I, I really like how it's coming out. I'm knitting this on five millimeter needles, which is what is recommended by the pattern. And my, my gauge, like I, I think I mentioned earlier, it was about 20 stitches. And again, I didn't wash my gauge swatch. Um, yeah, because I, I didn't knit another gauge swatch for this. Um, this is sort of like holding, holding the two curios with the one strand of Sparrow didn't change the gauge that, that much, as opposed to holding... Um, the two sparrow with the one curio so it's 20 stitches I think when it blocks I think it'll block out to 19 so that will be on gauge which is awesome and yeah I'm hoping that since it's linen and cotton that it won't be too hot to wear and again I'm planning on just doing like really short little cap sleeves pretty much and then using the majority of the yarn on the body so that hopefully it's at least long enough for me to tuck into my pants or have it sort of sit like right over the waistline of them. So yeah, I, I don't know what, what else there is to say about this one. Um, I just cast this on a few days ago, like over the weekend. So I haven't been working on it for too too long yet but yeah I'm I'm really happy with how the colors look I think they look really cool together and the only other thing is that the cotton and linen is not not super fun on my hands especially because I don't know if you can see you can kind of tell but I'm I've got sort of a, a uh, a flare with my eczema on my hands right now. I think just part of like the moving process. Um, and knitting isn't ugh, the the yarn. 
right over where it's all dry and tender and stuff is not, it's not the most fun. So I really have been alternating between the mega solar blouse and blouse number one because there's things in this that provide a nice relief, like this is only stockinette, but then this is nice because the wool feels beautiful on my hands compared to the uh, cotton and linen. So there are pros and cons with both and it makes them, it makes it really nice to have both projects to work on at the same time. So yeah, those are my whips. Um, otherwise, I think that, I think that's it for this episode. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope to see you again real soon. I'm going to aim for another two week sort of upload schedule. So maybe we'll have some nice progress on this. I don't know. I'm also going to be going out of town next week for a wedding. Um, so I don't know how much knitting I'll get done then, but we'll see. I hope everyone has been enjoying hopefully some better weather, some better weather, some sunshine, light to moderate <laughs> breezes, and that you've been getting some good knitting in. I will see you guys in another video. Bye. Thank you.